In a previous video, I showed using a Dremel and a 3D printer to make quite a simple PCB. And while this PCB is perfectly fine for through-hole components, it just didn't have enough detail for surface mount components. So in this video, we're going to use an assortment of bits to make a far more detailed and complex PCB using double-sided copper cladding. And I think you'll be quite amazed at what we can achieve. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Upload your PCB Gerba files, select your options, and receive an instant quote. Turn your next PCB project into reality at crazy low prices. To engrave the PCB traces on the copper cladding board, I'll be using this. This is a V-bit router. As the name suggests, it starts at a point and then tapers down. This particular one has a 60 degree taper from the point. So that should give a good combination between nice fine milling traces and support for that very fragile bit. I bought this particular bit locally, but you can buy these online and you can get them down uh, to as little as 0.1 millimeter engraving widths. And using that V-bit, I quickly tested out engraving that same PCB design from the previous video. So this particular PCB design is predominantly a through-hole component PCB. And using a V-bit here is kind of wasted because the track width is so narrow, the groove that can be milled. And you can see how much copper is left over between these pads. You could definitely get away with the uh, end mill that I used in the previous video, but this gives us a good idea of the level of detail that can be made using such a fine bit. But not all is rosy. If we zoom into the top left hand side here, we can see this piece of copper, which should have been milled away, was kind of pushed across. So looking at this, we can ascertain that this track was milled first, and then this particular had here was milled second, but rather than this copper being uh, milled away, it was kind of pushed over into the void left over from the previous operation. So it looks like we'll manually have to use a knife to scratch that away, as this pad is probably uh, grounding to this pad here. And the same thing has happened up here. We can tell that tiny little piece of copper uh, hasn't been milled away, it's just kind of been pushed to the side. So that's something to be wary of when designing such uh, fine detailed PCBs and using a V-bit router. And as a second test using that same V-bit router, this particular design is predominantly using surface mount components. Both the left and right hand side is the same circuit, however on the left hand side only one pass was made using the V-bit, but on the right hand side two passes were made with, with the V-bit router. That's allowed me to uh, mill slightly wider traces where there was spare copper available. And that was able to get rid of a lot of these squiggly little pieces of copper that were left over that were also visible in the other PCB. It's not perfect. There are still a few little stragglers here that need to be probably scraped off with a knife, but it's far cleaner and I would have far more success making two passes with that V-bit router rather than one. Using a V-bit router, the depth of the cut governs how wide the track width is going to be. The deeper the cut, the wider the track width. After all my testing, I'm going to stick with a depth of 0.1 millimeters into the copper. That produces a track width of only 0.2 millimeters. That seems to be a repeatable and a reliable depth for me. For this video, we'll be making the PCB for the Arduino Nano. This is a perfect example of a weekend project where you might have one of these plugged into a breadboard with surrounding components, but you're ready to move that onto its own PCB. And conveniently, on the Arduino website, we can download the Eagle files for this PCB design. Just like the previous video, we'll be using the free software called FlatCam. With FlatCam, we can export our PCB into G-code and with that G-code we can send to our 3D printers and use a Dremel to make our PCBs. So following the fantastic user guide that is embedded in the flatcam.org website, it goes through how to export uh, the CAD files from Eagle. It goes through 
how to export the PCB traces, which is what we'll need for this design. There are two traces, a top and bottom, and also how to export the drills. There are two different drills we'll be using for this. For the veers, we'll be using a 0.3 millimeter bit, and for the holes, a 0.9 millimeter bit. And as we'll be making a double-sided PCB, I'll be following the guide on flat cam on using pins. So halfway through the operation, we're going to have to flip the board around to be able to mill the underside of the copper cladding. And we need to use pins to ensure both the top and bottom traces are perfectly aligned as when we begin to drill our holes, the holes need to line up with the top and bottom traces. Instead of pins, I'll be using screws. These are M2 screws with a length of 6mm. Being M2, the thread is just below 2mm, so 1.87mm in diameter. And out of my burr cutting kit, I found one of these, which has a diameter of 1.77, so that's going to be perfect. I'll use this to drill the alignment holes for the pins, and then I'll screw these screws down through the PCB into the waste material underneath. Here we are in flat cam. I've gone ahead and imported the top and bottom PCBs and also the drill holes. I've used the double sided PCB tool which is embedded in this flat cam project to flip over the bottom trace. You need to flip over the bottom trace as we'll be flipping over the PCB. I've also flipped over the drills file because I'll be drilling last and that'll be from the bottom side. And lastly, I've created my alignment holes which will be used to screw those uh, screw M2 screws in as pins. For the top and bottom PCBs, I've set the width that the V-bit is going to cut to 0.2 millimeters. I've set the number of passes to two and I've chosen combined passes. And for the G-code, I'm cutting down to a depth of only 0.1 of a millimeter. This is the V-bit just scratching the top of the surface. I'll be traveling one millimeter above the PCB. So this is where it's not cutting, it's just moving above. I've set the feed rate to 120 millimeters per minute. That's only two millimeters per second. So that's how uh, fast it's going to uh, scratch away the top surface of the PCB. And finally, I've set the tool diameter here to 0.2 millimeters. And for the drills, we'll be drilling down to a depth of two millimeters travel speed one millimeter above the copper cladding and for the feed rate so this is how fast the drill is going to move I've set it quite slowly here only 15 millimeters per minute which is only a quarter of a millimeter per second and I've chosen that because I'm worried that that really tiny 0.3 millimeter drill bit will snap if I move any faster than this so I'll be drilling the holes quite slowly but I don't want the entire operation to move at this speed. So we'll be going into the G-code shortly after this to modify it so it's faster for every other operation except for plunging. So this is one limitation of flat cam. It only gives you one speed to select for all the moves. And the final operation will be the board cutout. For the cutout, I'll be cutting down to a depth of 1.8 millimeters. The travel distance will be one millimeter above the copper. For the feed rate, I'll be moving quite slowly again for this operation. I don't want to snap the burr cutter I'll be using. So we'll be traveling at only 60 millimeters per minute, which is equivalent to one millimeter per second. The tool diameter, I'll be using a 1.5 millimeter burr cutter here. And finally, I've chosen this multiple depth option. So for each depth or pass, it'll only be going down 0.3 millimeters. So 0.3 into 1.8, it'll take six passes to fully cut down this PCB. And here are our exported G-code files from FlatCam. As you can see, there are six files and we'll need to send them in one at a time because with each file, we'll have to change the drill bit that is attached to the Dremel on the 3D printer. We'll start with the alignment, that'll drill the four alignment holes for the screws to act as pins. Then we'll 
uh, send in the top PCB G code, so that'll mill out the top PCB trace. Then we'll flip over the board, followed by the bottom PCB traces. Then we'll drill the vias using the 0.3mm uh, drill bit. Then we'll drill uh, the holes using the 0.9mm drill bit. And finally, we'll send in the board cutout using our 1.5mm burr cutter. That'll cut out our board and free it from the rest of the copper cladding. As we'll be using the Marlin firmware on our 3D printer, we just need to open up these G-code files and modify just a couple of things to make it compatible with Marlin. I'll start with the alignment holes G-code file. The first thing that we need to uh, add to this file is this command here, M211S0. That disables the software end stops in Marlin and allows us to go into the negative territory. So for the alignment holes, I'll be using the M2 by 6 mm screws. I want to drill down to a depth of 6 mm here. And I've also just changed uh, the speeds. So all the speeds have this uh, letter F in front of them. So for the very first speed, I'm setting it quite fast for this, 300 millimeters per minute. It's only five millimeters per second. That's fast enough for what we need. That's going to move uh, from the home position to the very first position that it's going to drill, followed by changing the speed right down to 15 millimeters per minute. It's only a quarter of a millimeter per second to drill that six millimeter hole. Then finally, once it's drilled the hole, I'm going to speed back up again to 300 millimeters per minute. It's going to move to the next coordinate, then slow right down to drill the next hole. So that's going to speed up the entire drilling process uh, without breaking the bit attached to the uh, Dremel on the 3D printer. The same changes need to be applied to the two other holes files, so the 0.3 millimeter and the 0.9 millimeter. But for the rest of the files that are left, so the bottom, top and the board cut out, you need to still open them up. You need to add the M211S0 command. And lastly, you'll notice when you open them up, the speed command, which starts with the, let with the letter F, is on its own. There's no G code in front of it. Marlin does not like that. It needs a G code in front. Just add a G0 uh, to the start of... Uh, that F command and that'll ensure that the speed is applied correctly. As we'll be using a V-bit to engrave our PCB design, it is imperative that the platform is perfectly flat and level in respect to the V-cutter on the end of the Dremel. So you'll need to use your adjustment screws on each side of the bed to ensure the bed is level, uh, left to right and front to back. And we'll also be homing the Z-axis using the tip of the bit onto the copper cladding. So I have these two alligator clips here. These are just connected to the Arduino board or the ramps board on the Z minimum end stop. And using that setup, when you home the Z-axis, there will be contact or continuity made between the bit and the PCB. That'll then tell Marlin that it's homed and we'll have a perfect zero position on the z-axis. We'll also be homing the x-axis and the y-axis before the start of each g-code. And to double check to make sure that the z-axis homing is working, send in command M119 when the bit is not touching the PCB. And when it is touching the PCB, you should see triggered. And when it is no longer touching the PCB, it should say open. And now that we can home our z-axis using the exact cutting bit attached to the Dremel onto the top of the work surface, we can take advantage of Marlin's auto bed leveling. We only need to auto bed level when we have the v-bit attached to the Dremel. As it'll only be going down 0.1 millimeters, we need to ensure that that has the same distance throughout the entire milling operation. But when it comes to, you know, drilling holes or cutting out the board, it's not important, we're just blasting straight through. To set up auto bed leveling in Marlin, we'll be using the bilinear auto bed leveling option, three by three grid points, and no probe offset. Before I send in each of these G-code files one at a time, I'll be manually homing the Z-axis, 
then manually homing the X and Y axis by sending in these G-code commands. But only for the top and bottom PCB traces will I have the V-bit attached and only with the V-bit will I need to initiate the auto bed leveling sequence. So for those two operations I'll be sending in the G29 command but with the location that I want the homing to occur. The homing sequence will perform a 3x3 grid only in this box that I've chosen here. The first two coordinates are the x-axis, so L for left and R for right will be starting at position 15 and stopping at position 60. And for the y-axis, we have front and back. So it'll start from 65 millimeters on the y-axis and finish at 85 millimeters on the y-axis. And to turn on auto bed leveling, the second G-code command you need to send in is M420S1.
Shine. 
And after approximately 80 minutes of engraving, drilling and cutting out, we finally have our completed double-sided PCB. It came out absolutely beautifully. I am shocked that we can make this level of PCB at home. Looks quite professional. Might be a little bit difficult to solder something like this without a solder mask. Definitely would want to use uh, a stencil and some resin to help you out there. But all the holes on this particular one has come through and those veers, those tiny little 0.3mm uh, drills at one point I thought the drill bit was going to snap. You saw as the drill was going down it was kind of dancing on the top of the copper before gripping and finally drilling in. That meant most of the veer holes are off center only by a fraction of a millimeter. So I think next time I would make one of these I would probably pre-drill using the V-bit just a, like a little indentation for that 0.3 millimeter bit to grab onto. Hopefully that'll stop it from dancing around. So this is actually my second attempt. You can tell by this, the, uh, the, the cutout here. I have two cutouts or in the video you just saw one. So this is my first attempt and from the top surface it looks fine. Everything uh, went as planned but unfortunately if we turn it around you see the drill holes on the perimeter here haven't gone all the way through. So that was using the 0.9mm drill bit. They've kind of just pushed the copper up rather than drilled through. Whereas this second one, for my second attempt, I actually used a burr cutter, a 1mm burr cutter. So with a burr cutter, the tip of the burr cutter has like a, like a fish tail. It cuts from the circumference where a normal drill bit cuts from the center and spirals out from there. So I recommend using burr cutters where possible for PCB as opposed to standard drill bits. But the 0.3 didn't have an issue uh, cutting all the way through. And another problem that I experienced with this first test is not only did the holes not make it all the way through, but you'll notice they're off center. So this is the, I guess the bottom side you could say. So the holes are drilled from this side. So all these holes are nicely centered in their pads. Turn it around. Not only did the holes not make it all the way through, but you'll see they're not centered on these pads. And the problem I had there is my uh, bed was not perfectly level front to back. So as it was drilling down, as you could imagine, if, if the bed's not level, then as it's drilling down, it's drilling down at an angle, it's going in perfectly on one side, but then coming out off center on the other. So for the second PCB, I definitely made sure that the bed was level front to back as well. And that came out perfectly on both sides. You'll see the, the drills uh, centered top and bottom. This was a very high learning curve for me. I haven't made PCBs like this before, but after just my second attempt, I was able to make a double-sided PCB, which is usable. And I did use my multimeter on this uh, second PCB here and just buzzed out all the traces just to make sure there weren't any open circuits or any shorts to, to ground or any other, other pads. So I think this particular board would work. And even though this was quite an interesting exercise, Generally speaking, you just send your design out to a PCB fabricator and get it made professionally. The main reason, I guess, that you would still want to make your PCBs at home like this is time. So, you know, within an hour and a half, you can be holding the finished PCB in your hand rather than waiting days or weeks for your design to be sent from a PCB fabricator. And don't forget, even though you've drilled the holes for the vis, they aren't through plated. There is no electrical connection between the top and bottom PCB surfaces. So you'll have to use quite small wire through each via and just a dab of solder on each side to make the continuity connection. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments, and I'll catch you next time.